Pop quiz time. What is R290? A droid found in a galaxy far, far away? <laughs> Possibly. And a good answer. But not what I was looking for. A droid in a nearby galaxy. All right, all right, no. <laughs> I'll tell you. R290 is a refrigerant-grade propane that is used in a wide range of commercial refrigeration and air conditioning units. But why do you need R290? And what benefits does it bring to your next HVAC design? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Paul Kramars from Little Fuse and I explore the what, where, and how of R290. We also investigate the testing methods utilized for this kind of refrigerant and how Little Fuse is furthering innovation in this arena. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Little Fuse. Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, hello. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. All right. So we're talking about how we can tackle R290 challenges when designing in electromechanical components into HVAC applications. So, Paul... Before we dig into the details, what all will we be covering today? Well, the agenda is bringing a, a list of things there. We're basically talking about basic switching of electricity here when contacts open and close under load, an arcing or a spark can occur, and obviously this could present a problem with flammable propane-based refrigerants, which R290 is. The industry changed to a more environmentally friendly refrigerant present some challenges as standard switch products would not be safe to use. And this is where this application came up and the suggestion for these particular parts. Fantastic. So, Paul, first, talk to me about R290. What exactly is it and why do we need it? Refrigerants work by absorbing heat and changing states from liquid to gas and back again, effectively transferring the heat from one area to another. And that's how they're used in these cooling systems, whether it be a air conditioning unit or a refrigerator or anything like that. And the propane-based R290 was chosen as something as a replacement to the existing Freons, R22s, and et cetera, because of the environmental impact that those particular substances had. And the R290 is less harmful to the environment, so to speak, but the problem is that it's also more flammable. I see. Okay. So there are approvals by government agencies associated with R290, right? Correct. Underwriters Laboratories, UL, is the recognized agency here in the States for standards for safety, whether it be electrical or otherwise. And having a UL or a, the UR backwards mark, the recognized product, means that your testing has been done to ensure that it's safe to use in the application. The standards referenced above for the use in ignition-proof applications in addition to the standards governing switches, our UL1054 and the newer 61058, are what our products have been tested to. So the ST series toggles that were approved by this customer for the ice maker is the UL60079-15, which is used for explosive gas atmospheres. We have another product that's also along these lines that we tested to NCKL2 for ignition proof certificate for the V-series rocker switches, but we'll get into these two different products later. Okay, so talk to me about the testing methods of R290. I did get some information from the UL test method and how it's done, and essentially what we're doing is we are trying to explode this refrigerant gas, and it would be safer to do it in the smaller arc chamber inside the switch than it is in a larger atmosphere where the explosion could be greater. So instead of filling a chamber with gas and turning the switch on to see if the spark inside the switch will ignite that chamber, they take the switch, they drill a hole, they put a little tiny spark plug in there, they seal it up, and then they fill it with the R290, and they seal that up, then they ignite that, or they try to. If there's no oxygen present 
within that sealed chamber, it's not going to ignite. So that refrigerant material, that, that propane material doesn't ignite. And it'd be much safer if it did ignite for a small switch to explode as opposed to a large chamber. Paul, what kind of solution would you suggest here? The solution presented to this particular customer, they were using an older G-based series toggle that we had, which is not a sealed product. And they came up with this need for a sealed product to meet these explosive atmosphere testing. I said, well, we have this ST series, newer style toggle, which we can translate or trace the parts that they were buying and, and change them over to this new series because it is a sealed uh, product as opposed to the older G-Base. Originally, we submitted to the new switch standard, the 61058, and it met those particular approvals. And it was also done that we did a, a project to submit this for marine systems and, you know, the fuel systems that are involved with UL-1500. Carling's very big in the marine market. So that's where this, this switch came from. This slide particular shows the exact part numbers that the customer chose based off of their old G-Base switches with the conversion to the new ST series. So these are the ones that that particular customer chose for part numbers to stock. Paul, are there any other solutions that we should consider here? We had another customer that was looking for a rocker switch as opposed to the bat style toggle. And it's a different look and feel. And one needed a lighted switch, which wasn't also available in the toggle. And um, they had a walk-in cooler, but they wanted a, a light to go off to see if one was in the cooler being used at the time. So we tested another product, a sealed product that we use pretty exclusively in the transportation and marine market, the V-Series. And this is also a sealed switch, and it was tested to another standard, the NCKL2 ignition proof component certificate. So we currently have two part numbers listed here under products that are approved to this standard. So if somebody has another application with the R290, this is another choice besides the toggle that's already been approved by the 60015 or 60079-15. So Paul, if my audience wants more information about the ST series or the V series, where should they go? You can scan the QR codes here on this particular screen. You can go to the website, Carling Tech, and under products, you can see toggle switches and look at the ST series, download the PDFs. You can go to rocker switches, sealed rocker switches, and look at the V series and download that particular product information. You can get drawings, 3D files on the website. And of course, you can always contact us if you would need to speak to someone or go more in depth. So, Paul, if my audience wants to get a hold of someone at Little Fuse to help them with their next design, what would you suggest? You can start with the CVP tech line at littlefuse.com or on the right side of the website, there's a contact us section on Carling website. And based on the products, they get distributed to the application engineers that would be heading those particular product lines. Uh, myself for switches or Miller in the China area and Mike Michaud for circuit breakers protection for Carling products. And also there's a group of guys that we've got doing the Little Fuse base side or solutions market. And that will direct it to the correct person to give you the answer. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, my pleasure. Have a great day. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Little Fuse. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.